up, y'all? It's Joe Master Lee. And All right, so I just got you to experience baby metal for the yeah. first time. I'm sure that was mind blowing. Yes. And uh, they're an amazing metal group, female metal group from Japan. If you haven't heard it before, you need to go check it out. But you know, the funny thing about Japan is I've been there many, many times. Mm -hmm. I actually worked from there half the time when I used to work at Konami. So I used to work for a Japanese company. Mm -hmm. You've got to go there now recently. But despite all that, I feel like it's still one of the countries that I least understand the most. Really? Yeah. It's very ironic. Complicated? Is it complicated? It's not that it's complicated. It's that it's a country that tends to keep a lot of its core values and culture and, and the way they go about society mm -hmm. very close-knit. In other words, if you're a foreigner and you go to visit Japan or you live in Japan, they don't really open up to you about what life is really like there. And so I thought, you know what? Let's watch this Geography Now Japan to really dig into this, Let into the history. Let Geography Now explain. Exactly. <laughs> In 10 minutes, we're going to give the full rundown and uh, get into some of the more interesting aspects of Japan, rather than, I think, what everyone thinks of Japan is, which is, you know, anime and manga and J-pop <laughs> and sushi, right? Like, all the things that, are seem, that just seem so obvious. These are things that I think Westerners have embraced, but there's a side of Japan we know very little so about. So he's going to cover I'm going to bet because, man, Geography Now goes deep. I got it. <laughs> go deep. Go deep and faster, though. <laughs> My brain is so slow. Deep and faster. What are you doing? Dirty. <laughs> oh, ew. You're dirty. Man. By the way, the reason why she's wearing this is uh, because she reacted to Baby Metal. This is her best, right. best uh, Japanese Cute, anime rocky. Job. Kawaii outfit. Yes. All right, let's do this, y'all. And away, away, ago. This is one country I barely have to introduce you to. Let's just get it over with. Sushi, geishas, karate, temples, ramen, anime, sumo's weird stuff, weird cosplay, poison fish, and I'm not even gonna ask. See, you. those are all the things we think we know. He just summarized it. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. We have reached the land of the rising sun, Asia's island powerhouse, and home to a culture that I'm sure you've heard of. Let's just jump into it. Ah, Japan, you have such a story behind you. First of all, Japan is located right off the east coast of the Asian continent between the Pacific Ocean and the Sea of Japan, stretching all the way from the Sea of Okhotsk in the north with the East China Sea to the south. The country is divided into 47 prefectures, each with incredibly beautifully minimalistic style flags. The prefectures oh, are divided wow. into four different categories, Ken, so To, Fu, cute. and Do. The first level, Ken, <laughs> Ken. <laughs> refers to the 43 plain prefectures. Then you have To, which means something like metropolis, and this category only applies to Tokyo City. Fu refers to the urban prefectures, which applies only to the cities of Osaka and Kyoto. And finally, Do, which is a unique Sometimes category. Sometimes it goes a little too deep. Like, like, I don't think I need to know all this. it applies this. to all of Hokkaido. In Hokkaido! The That's Love where Hokkaido's. you were. Yeah, I used to work from there. Speaking of which, Tokyo, Japan's capital, is the largest city in the world with its greater metropolitan area, including Kanto, containing about 37 million people. That's more than the entire population of Canada. However, Tokyo is kind of like 23 smaller cities all smashed into one divided into units called wards and the closest thing to a capital one would probably be Chiyoda where the Emperor Prime Minister and Supreme Court are located after the greater Tokyo Kanto region you have the next largest cities Osaka and Nagoya coming in at third keep in mind about 90% of people in Japan live in cities and the vast majority on Honshu and Kyushu the busiest airports of course being Tokyo's two twins Haneda which is actually in Tokyo and Narita International. International which is like an hour and a half drive away outside of Tokyo then you have Osaka's Kansai International <laughs> Kicks. And Fukuoka International on Kyushu. <laughs> Uh, Gotta keep it clean, Keith. Speaking of which, Japan is made up of about 6,850 islands, but about 97% of the land is made up of four main islands, Honshu, Kyushu, Shikoku, and Hokkaido. South of the main four, you have the Ryukyu Island chain, which extends just south of Kyushu, partially making up the Okinawa prefecture. You've probably heard of mm -hmm. Okinawa. It's where Uma that's, Thurman that's got that sword that she you. used to kill Lucy Liu. It's also where these two islands... <clears throat> never mind. Nonetheless, Japan can still kind of be separated into ten historical main regions, six of which divided amongst Honshu. Then you have the interesting, less highlighted Kuro Island, Island dispute with Russia in the north. Basically, Russia administers all of them, but Japan claims these two islands closest to Hokkaido, Iturup or Etorofuto, and Kunashir or Kunashiri, which is only like less than 10 miles away from Hokkaido. On a clear day, you can even see it from the coast, but it's like, nope, Russia. They even have a statue of Lenin. The Russians and Japanese have kind of had a long dispute over this area. At one point, Japan even tried to take over all of Sakhalin in the 1800s. Yeah, but what are the natives? Like, are they more Japanese or more Russian? 
Islands. Then you have the Dokdo Takashima Island dispute between them and South Korea. To this day, South Korea has a patrol building built on the island and they fiercely guard it. And finally, you have Okino Torishima, which is probably the loneliest place in Japan as a shallow reef in the middle of the ocean. It looks like it's trying so hard oh to become gosh. an island complete with three helipads and a research Whoa. station. There's no diplomatic dispute, but rather a dispute within the UN on whether or not it qualifies as land for an exclusive economic zone in the ocean. Phew, okay, all right, that kind of took forever. Getting around in Japan is incredibly easy, often touted as having the best public the best. transportation best system best in the best. world. They have highways and trains everywhere, even one that cuts through an office building, as well as the Shinkansen bullet train system that can get you to virtually every corner of Honshu and Kyushu, as well as the bottom tip of Hokkaido, but not Shikoku. If you want to go to Shikoku, you have to take the slower local Seto Ohashi line across the Seto Bridge. Yeah, Shikoku is kind of like the runt of the litter in Japan. Basically, Japan is like one big massive machine, constantly running and moving with flashing neon lights, vending it's machines. It's kind of what it feels like no matter where you everything. go. Everything, even the garbage cans have I cartoons, cartoons everywhere. Anyway, some notable places of interest might include Tokyo Sky Tree, the second tallest building in the world, Miyajima Pagoda, there, Matsumoto there, Himeji and Osaka Castles, the Fushimi Inari Shrine, the Fukuda Hall, Nakagin Capsule Tower, the Vine Bridges of Ia Valley, the Ramen Museum, so many weird themed restaurants and hot springs, the self mummified monks oh of Sokushin Butsu, that hotel run by robots, oh. the Ninja Museum in Iga. Baby, we need to go to Japan. I hear you, baby. I hear you. There's so many stuff to go and explore. You really can't do it in one trip. You kind of almost have to. It's sort of like saying, I'm going to go visit America. Like, where do you go? Right. Now, despite the bustling metropolis regions and skyscrapers, Japan does an incredible job at maintaining its natural integrity. Find out how in... <laughs> Now, Japan's land is kind of like a gingerbread house. Beautiful on the outside, but potentially dangerous on the inside. First of all, Japan is a stratovolcanic archipelago located right on the most precariously situated section where four major tectonic plates converge, the Pacific, the Philippine, the Eurasian, and the North American plates. Of course, this means that not only is Japan subject to earthquakes, but also tsunamis, which by the way is a Japanese word, tsunami, caused from sub-oceanic activities such as the one recently in Fukushima caused by the epicenter in the Japan Trench off the Pacific. This also means that Japan is a volcanic area with numerous volcanoes still active, like Aogashima, a volcano within a volcano. Mount Aso, the largest volcanic caldera. This in return also blesses Japan with countless natural hot springs, Look which they that. like to exploit and build bathhouses oh, on, called onsen, springs, typically babe. indicated with this symbol. All this plate so activity amazing. in volcanoes means that about 70% of Japan is mountainous, with the highest peak, Mount Fuji, overlooking Tokyo, which by the way is still technically an active oh, volcano, which erupted really about nice 300 view. years ago. The rift between the Philippine plate and the Eurasian plate creates the Japanese Alps, which bisects the country on Honshu. This isolated geologic war zone in return, though, kind of blesses Japan with an abundance of unique flora and fauna. Today, about 70% of Japan is forested with nice natural water sources, like the longest river, the Shinano, and the largest lake, Lake Biwa on Honshu. Endemic animals can be found, like Japanese hornets, makake monkeys, Those tanukis, monkeys so giant cute. salamanders, bobtail cat, sero. They would literally sit in the hot springs with you while you're oh, scary. <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone's just chilling, baby. They're just chilling. Are uh, sure? Oh, oh my God. Oh my god. Oh. Of course, Jigoku Dani, where That's you can see those monkeys in hot springs. <laughs> oh with limited space god. and only about 20% highly subsidized arable land, Japan has kind of had to think outside the box. So they said, hey, why not go to the sea? Today, Japan is disputably the most advanced aquaculture society on the planet. Not only do they have the largest merchant marine fleet in the world, but they also harvest everything from shellfish to seaweed in offshore ocean plots and fish farms. They love fish. They even have the largest fish market in the world, Tsukichi. Mm. Speaking of which, oh, we all know nice. about Japanese food. I feel like I don't even really have to give you a there. list of notable mm. dishes like sushi, mochi, or ramen. However, Japan is known for making strange flavors of conventional <laughs> snacks, drinks, and desserts, such as yogurt Pepsi, spaghetti oh popsicles, horse and octopus ice cream, pancake juice, <gasps> wasp crackers, oh. and Kit Kat has tried pretty much anything under the sun. Itadakimasu! Speaking of which, Japan is the third largest world economy by nominal GDP, mostly due to their various technology and automotive industries that have swept over the world by storm since the middle of the 20th century. The largest automotive companies include Toyota, Mitsubishi, Honda, Nissan, My Mazda, Suzuki, and Subaru, as well as tech companies and their subsidiaries like Hitachi, Sony, Epson, Canon, Toshiba, Fujitsu, Panasonic, Nikon, and Nintendo. This does, however, cause a problem. Japan is classified as a high throwaway society in which lots of resources get unnecessarily used and tossed. Like, come on, Japan, I know you have aesthetic standards, but seriously, I don't need one apple in vacuum sealed plastic wrap. Nonetheless, Japan is often seen as point. one of, if not the world leader in robotics and tech science, well, receiving like more Nobel Prizes in no science than any other Asian country. And it's kind of impressive. I mean, with a high population and limited space, Japanese people know how to consolidate and innovate. Speaking of Japanese people.
Now, Japanese people are like, you never know what they're gonna come up with next. You know it's probably gonna be a little weird, but you're still gonna be a little interesting. <laughs> First of all, the country has about 127 million people and is the 10th most populous country in the world. However, Mexico is getting really close to beating them. The country is incredibly homogenous with over 98% of the populace See, identifying as ethnically Japanese, the, while the remainder the is mostly made up of Koreans, Chinese, and very small Caucasian wow, minorities of Americans and Europeans, and the indigenous Japanese. Ryukyu and Ainu peoples. They use the Japanese yen as their currency. They surprisingly use the type A American style plug outlet, and they drive on the left side of the road. As mentioned, like eight seconds ago, Japan has two main indigenous ethnic groups, each with their own languages. You have the Ainu, which predominantly inhabit Hokkaido and some of the Kuril Islands administered by Russia. Known for their rustic scruffy features, where men what grew the beards heck? and women used Is to tattoo their lips and arms. Today, there are less than 30,000 left, but some estimate that there could be up to 200,000 if you include the other Ainu that have assimilated into the rest of Japan and are kind of faintly aware of their own culture. Otherwise, you have the Ryukyu people or the Okinawans, which are kind of like the Hawaiians of Japan, known mm -hmm. for their own distinct art and traditions and beliefs. Now, everybody I in the world has had at least a little bit of exposure to some kind of Japanese expensive. culture, whether it be samurais, geishas, so sumos, Hawaii. kabuki, shamisen music, kimonos, and excessively weird products and advertisements aimed at using non-conformity as a hook to engage viewers. <laughs> but apart from all that flashy Japan stuff, let's look at the basics first. Japan, no surprise, speaks Japanese, which is actually not that hard to learn conversationally, but it's a nightmare when it comes to writing. The Japanese language uses three alphabets, hiragana, katakana, and kanji. Technically four if you include romaji, but that's kind of like for lazy people. The first two, hiragana and katakana, are syllabaries made up of 46 corresponding base characters each. That means you have two ways to write each syllable, whereas kanji is basically the list of Chinese characters that they borrowed from China. Most students have to learn about two to 3,000 of these. That means that Chinese people can kind of get by in Japan just by yeah, reading the signs, as most of the characters have identical meanings, just different pronunciations. It's kind of hard to explain, but the reason why they use three alphabets is because each one kind of plays a role for certain words in context. They don't use spaces in writing, so each alphabet kind of acts as like word dividers, and katakana is used for technical and foreign words? Whoa. Well, why don't they just fix the problem by using spaces and discard the other two alphabets? Shut up! That's why! If you didn't grow up here and actually learn this stuff, you're either obsessed with Japan or criminally insane. Sorry, I'm boring the crap out of you guys with language stuff. Anyway, let's talk about history! Now, I'm sure many of you have seen that video by Bill Wirtz, whom I am totally not jealous of, considering that he racked up more views and subscribers in two videos than I have in all these years of working on this channel, but in the quickest way I can summarize it, Yayoi period, Kofun period, Yamatos unite Japan, Asuka regime, Chinese culture comes in, Heian period, aristocrats take over, Kamakura period, aristocrats lose, Shogun time, province wars, Azuchi Momoyama period, things are stable, Meiji restoration. I wonder how many takes he does this so that he talks so fast. That's a good point. <laughs> this guy does his research and he does a lot of takes. Mm -hmm. Post-war economic miracle, done! Japan definitely sticks out from every country on Earth, and it's partially because of their belief system. Japan is the only country in the world that Shintoism. practices Shintoism, which obviously enough started in Japan. If you don't know anything about Shintoism, basically it's a very ritualistic belief system that reveres a multitude of kami, which translates to something along the lines of gods or spirits or essence. It's hard to explain, but basically a kami can be manifested in almost anything and everything. There are kami for harvest, kami for war, kami for good luck, and so on. Today, about 80% of Japanese people practice Shinto to some extent, whether it be going to temples or shrines and lighting incense and praying. However, most of them will not say that they identify as Shintoists since there are no formal rituals to deem yourself yeah, a practitioner. Kind of Otherwise, about 35% might point. say that they identify as Buddhists and a small 3% are Christians. Today, there are about 81,000 Shinto shrines and about 85,000 appointed Shinto priests all over the country. Technically, Shintoism is also important because it's claimed that the emperor is a direct descendant of Amaterasu, the goddess of the sun, which means the emperor has the highest authority in Shintoism. Though today, it's more seen as like a moral tradition and patriotic practice rather than believing that the emperor actually has divine status. Oh yeah, and Japan has an imperial family with Akihito holding the throne since 1989. Oh. And to this day, Japan is the only country with an emperor. Some people will say that Shintoism is partially the reason why Japan also has a vibrant, complex industry of cartoons and anime, many of which inspired from Shinto-driven legends and kami. They often rank as the top video game producing and playing country in the world. Everybody knows Mario, Sonic, and Pikachu. In a sense, Japanese people have always admittedly kind of been escapists, creating their own worlds, and it might be due to their long history of diplomatic isolation. In other sense, though, honor and diligence culture is of huge importance. Having a degree and respectable title is always flaunted. The problem, though, is that Japan has the largest aging population in the world, in which over 26% yeah, of the country is 65 or older. In contrast, they, only about 12.4% are 1 to 14 years old. They Sociologists do. have many theories as to kids. why this is, but in addition to a high depression rate, there seems to be a lack of sexual interest amongst millennials, especially for they men. They even have a word for it, soshoku danshi, or herbivores. On top of it's that, kind of Japan has a very strict and conservative approach towards immigration.
immigration and citizenship. So ultimately, a smaller generation has to lift the burden of taking care of a population almost 10 times their size. Any Japanese people are overworked, they even have a word for that, karoshi. Some wonder how the future will look like. Hey son, can you help me cross the street? Ooh, I would, but you never had a son, so I don't exist. Good luck! Now you can probably understand why the Japanese are so into building robots. There's so much more we could talk about, like how Japan has a That's strong history in martial they actually arts, are folklore, building robots and regional take festivals, care of the but generation. this video is already getting long oh and I have to cut it down. Some notable people of Japanese oh descent might include people like Emperor Hirohito, Fukuzawa Yukichi, Honda Tatakatsu, Kukai, Maeda Toshie, Tokugawa Leyasu, Murasaki Shikibu, Saifo Takamori, Akira Kurosawa, Hayao Miyazaki, Soichiro Honda, Miyoshi Umeki, Hibari Misora, Rinko Kikuchi, Osamu Danzai, Kei Nishikori, Ayumi Hamasaki, Takeshi Hitano, Masayoshi Son, Akira Toriyama, Ooh, Sadako Ogata, Kaiho Koki, Masako Katsura, Ichiro Suzuki, Hane Mori, Ken Watanabe, Downtown Duo, Keisuke Honda, and Shinji Kagawa. Now due to their history, Japan has always kind of been like a lone wolf, but over time they learned how to open up. And let's find out how in the last segment, the... Opening up! So Japan is a pretty big player on the world stage. As a member of the G20, G8, IMF, WHO, UN, EAS, Interpol, and like 400 other acronyms, they know diplomacy pretty well. They get along with Brazil, Peru, and the Philippines pretty well, as each country contains many Japanese communities. And in addition, lots of people from these countries either visit or work in Japan. Peru even had a Japanese president. As mentioned in the France episode, Japan kind of sees France as like the epitome of European exoticism. And after English, French is one of the most highly desired languages to learn. Although good luck considering how every French word kind of ends true. in a continent. Like, <laughs> I wanted to become a... Um, Jap, uh, what do you call that? Japanese? Jap, no, no, when they work to Japan. There's a term for that. Japayuki, from Philippines that goes to Japan and they work there, perform, entertain. Japayuki. That was my dream. South Korea and China. These three are like the Asian trifecta, dominating most of the business and affairs in the East. Despite Japan having invaded and occupying these two for decades, my own grandmother was actually raised in Japanese occupied Korea, and to this day she still speaks fluent Japanese. They've mostly moved on, plus the whole North Korea thing kind of makes South Korea and Japan closer. The youth of today love piggybacking off of each other's cultures. Koreans and Japanese admit it, they can't get enough of Japanese anime and video games, whereas the Japanese are obsessed with K-pop, and you know, they kind of got kanji and Buddhism from China, so uh, there's that. In terms of their best friends, however, Interestingly enough though, most of the Japanese people I've talked to have said the USA and Taiwan. Even though they don't officially recognize Taiwan as a sovereign state on paper, they totally act like they do instead. Taiwanese people love Taiwan Japanese culture. Years, and they have Aww. since then still kept close. Even though the pains of World War II will never be forgotten, it's funny because almost immediately after that, the US and Japan started skipping down the street hand in hand. The US kind of felt like a duty to make reparations since they were already communities of Japanese Americans, especially in Hawaii and California. My hometown, Los Angeles, has a little Tokyo. So they invested tons of money in Japan after the war, and in the 50s, Japan started booming in every industry. Culture cues were adopted on both sides. Donald's opened up in Tokyo, 7-Eleven opened up in the US. They love burgers and Chris Evans, and we have <laughs> nerds what? living in their mom's basements re-watching every season of Naruto Shippuden with ill-fitting cosplay oh outfits. In conclusion, the land of the rising sun has he always kind of figured that the best way for them to open up to the world was to create their own worlds with wild imaginations driven by technology, yet still beautifully preserving the ancient, vibrant values of their ancestors. Oh, and by the way, this episode was brought to you by Bob Saget's Bear Shark Tipus Coffee Shoes! Watashi wa kohito kutsuga hoshi Let's super harassment sandwich! Stay tuned! Oh, what? <laughs> what an ending. Oh my oh god. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is such a nice video. I want to go. Makes I miss go traveling, again. right? With this pandemic. Oh, it's just sad at the same time. Oh, no. I didn't think it would last this can't. long. Oh. We can't travel. And too bad the last time we went, we were sick the whole time. Yes, so we were, sick we were too. really didn't get to see much of Okinawa That's at right. all. Just a couple of things. Yep. And just, yep. oh, there's so much to do in, in Japan. Right. You can easily spend a year there absorbing everything. And I, I feel like you kind of have to because. In order for you to be able to speak the language well enough to be able to understand what understand to be able to culture, yeah to yeah. open up to get them to open up right. otherwise you you're kind of not allowed to partake in a lot of ceremonial stuff to mm. uh, just like cultural stuff you might as well just watch a video and be able to mm. appreciate it that way mm. but uh, once you're able to get in and when they open up it's really fascinating to, mm. to well, observe you have a friend that you're a good friend yeah i have a lot of friends actually in japan yeah, in still japan. Yeah, yeah when i used to work there he's still there he's up in hokkaido which is very different hokkaido is almost 
almost like uh, urban. America's Aspen. Very, uh, ah. not urban, it's opposite, complete opposite. Very, very rural. Oh. Yeah, nothing out there except for amazing seafood because it's right, it's like surrounded by beautiful oceans. Fresh and food. And they have amazing ski resorts because the, the snow there. I actually know friends who would just go to Hokkaido uh, like once a year for an anniversary to ski or snowboard there because wow. the best powder. And in fact, that's what wow. my friend uh, John did. Oh, a lot of, he retired um, and then he went to start up a ski resort up in Hokkaido. He bought an old one. He's running it. I don't know how well no, he's doing it. Yeah, it's, uh, I was talking about John. Is uh, he? Yeah, he's running a ski a... resort. No Last way. I heard, I don't know if he's still doing or if he still got back into technology and working in Tokyo, but he built a house up in Hokkaido. Yeah. Yeah, he would, and it's an American oh God, style house. Wow. It's really, really unusual. You drive around everywhere wow. up in Hokkaido, everything looks like Japanese except for his wow. one American style house that he built brick by brick, lumber piece by lumber piece. And every time he went back to Japan, he would bring more of these goods back. And he had a, I guess, a carpenter who would build it over seven years. It took him about oh seven years gosh. to build that wow. house. Yeah. That would be nice if we can go and visit them. Yeah, it would be. The kids, they're probably uh, they're so big oh, shoot, by They'd now. probably be adults at this point. Yeah. 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 Oh, well. Anyways. I really wanted really, to go really to Japan. Amazing. I always, always wanted to go. Great video. And uh, hey, if you have other interesting videos about Japanese culture, and I, what I mean by that is don't recommend me some anime stuff, right? I don't need to watch episodes of Naruto. But interesting you know, like what, you know, amazing things about Japan. Let us know, recommend it to us, and I'd be happy to check it out. All right, y'all. Peace out.